Hey class, um, I'm just here to give you guys a demo so that you can go back to it uh, back and forth whether you missed the initial uh, wheel throwing cylinder demo or you just want to refresh yourself and see uh, some steps that could help you um, do better next time you go on the wheel. So I'm just going to go through every step that you should be taking and my recommendations for how to throw on the wheel. So. Number one is you need to get about a two pound chunk of clay. Um, this is about exactly that, I use the scale to measure it out. Anything less than that might be a hard time. Uh, you might have a hard time uh, creating something that's over six inches. Uh, anything over that will be a lot of clay to work with and probably make a lot more than you need to make or a bigger pot than you would need to make. So um, I'm working with two pounds here, I'm gonna get started by just before the wheel's even on, I'm getting started by getting it um, kind of suctioned down onto the wheel head on a wheel without a bat on it. You can use your um, wheel lines or your throwing lines that are on the wheel to see where the center is. So try to get it closest to the center before even starting. And that's what this looks like, just kind of moving the wheel head around, getting it ready to go. And then the first thing I do when I do get the wheel going is change that is just compress down with a little bit of water to get it stuck to the wheel head so I'm not even centering at this point I'm literally just pushing down so it doesn't go anywhere I see a lot of times students who don't do that or skip that step they'll eventually um, push the, the clay or their pot off the wheel and it will ruin it so just push down to get it compressed and now you can start centering and this is what I do to start centering there's a bunch of different ways to do this but this is the way I found it works well for me and for students is I use my left hand I'm a righty but I use my left hand to push towards the center like this okay so just my left hand is pushing towards the center of the wheel and then at the same time I use my right hand to push down towards the center and what I do is put those two together to make it um, centered going this way and then centered going down as well. So using my hands in kind of a firm position with my fists, my fist is kind of just pushing towards the center both ways and they meet in the middle to make it center. So try to keep this arm as steady as possible. Don't let it move or don't let your arms move around with the clay. Okay, so try to do your best of just keeping a stiff arm there. If you're having a hard time maintaining that, then try putting it against like your hip bone and then that way it just kind of a solid line between your arm and the clay. Um, otherwise you'll eventually kind of feel your arm it's a muscle memory there so it won't allow you to move it as much and then I'm just using this part of my my fist or at the bottom of my hand to make a nice flat top here and we're making a large disc basically a, a fat hockey puck uh, and that's what we want to make for a good cylinder this is going to be a good shape for us to build off of so I'm using that part of my fist to make a flat top I'm using this part of my hand to have a parallel side. A lot of times what happens is what's gonna happen to you is you're gonna have an off-centered chunk of clay like this. What you can do from there is just like I said, but just try to get that chunk of clay towards the center. You can move your left hand in and kind of hold. And if you just kind of hold it there for like five seconds or until you feel that it kind of clicks, that's gonna help it get on center. And then do the same on the top like I was just showing. So. I'm just kind of telling the clay where it should be for a long period of time. So for five seconds there in the same steady motion, it's going to want to stay where I told it to go or where I'm telling it to go. I see a lot of students want to use two hands and, and, you, and some people do throw that way and it works for them. You can center going like this as well, but my what I've noticed from a lot of students is that they're, they got two hands telling the clay to do two different things. So if that is something you've noticed and it's still not centering when you're using two hands, then I recommend going to one where I'm just showing you like here, 
one hand's telling it what to do, right hand's telling it to go down. Okay, so those are two different parts of the clit. So I'm gonna, from here, I'm gonna open it up and make a cylinder, but this is your most important part. If you're not centered, then you're not gonna be able to throw a cylinder or throw in height up. So make sure you're really focusing on this, especially the first week of this project or when you're first starting, is just throwing, um, or just really practicing your centering, okay? And then from there, if you get successful from there where you are um, able to start throwing a pot, then go for it. But then from here, what I do is I use one finger, my index finger, and then my other index finger to compress down. Some people use their thumb. And you're gonna go down all the way to where you want your base to be, and your base should be about a half inch thick, something like that, um, so that you can have a nice base to work off of and have to uh, trim later or just um, just so that you don't get too thin at the bottom basically. So your index finger is going to pull towards you to widen up the base and kind of create the inside of the cup. I like to use my thumb to compress down on the bottom to make sure there's no bubbles but also making a nice flat bottom on here. I got it to a good width. Your goal should to also be to get this as close to a 90 degree angle as possible on these walls here at the bottom. So um, using your thumb or your index finger once again to kind of just clean up those bases to get there, okay? So now I'm in a pretty good spot to start pulling and to start pulling clay upwards. So what I do for this is I use two fingers on my left hand on the inside of the pot, those are the two middle fingers, and then I always use a sponge on the outside. It's a nice support on the outside where it doesn't um, kind of, your fingers can kind of sometimes indent in to the clay if you don't use a sponge. So I like to use a sponge for that reason. It also kind of smooths it out while I'm working on it anyway. So I get a nice wet and clean sponge. I'm using two fingers from the base to the top of the pot to just slowly pinch a little bit of clay at a time upward. If you try to pinch too much at a time, it's gonna, um, basically you're gonna make it too thin, too quick, and then it's not gonna have a good um, thickness at the bottom of your pot. So what you're doing is you're just slowly moving clay upward and telling it where to go and uh, creating a nice, well-structured pot. When I first started, this took me probably 40 or 50 poles just to get it to this height. And um, that's just what it takes sometimes to like, you gotta learn how to slowly pinch the clay up. And basically, if you were here to look at the clay as I'm doing this, I have a small, you see that band moving up? I'm basically throwing a small band of clay upward every time. It's not a big chunk of clay, but it's enough to make the pot taller every time. And then what always happens with me is I slowly make my pot wider as I'm throwing, and that's okay, that happens. But what I do is, like I just did there, is collar, and that's when you use two hands, keep them wet, to slowly collar the clay upward so that you get that nice tall cylinder look like we were talking about, or like that, what we're, what we're trying to achieve. And then you can go back to pulling again. I could probably still get another inch out of this. Make sure you're only going about half speed on the wheel. You never want to be going too fast, especially when you're starting. But too slow makes it difficult too. All right, so I'm gonna pinch again, a little bit at a time. I can feel that I'm getting a little bit thinner in some areas. So I wanna be a little more careful at this point and then also maybe just clean it up, make sure I like what I got. and then probably call it good here. So if you're good on height, you should use a ruler to measure out that six inches. Um, then you can feel free to like clean it up. So make those refinements we've talked about in the past where you need to use your sponge. 
to clean it up. I also like to use plastic rib on the outside if I'm really trying to make a good 90 degree base or smoothed out edges. Use both sides of the rib to make a nice smooth surface. Probably collar one more time to get in back a little bit of height. And then use my sponge to clean one more time, get all that water out of the base, out of the middle. Clean up any lines on the side you don't want. And then one of the last things I always do is use a wood tool or a wood knife to cut a nice 45 degree angle off the bottom of my pot. This helps a lot with cutting the pot when I'm done, which I'm about to do, and then also helps when going to trim later on or maybe not even having to have to. So um, I also notice I want to just kind of clean up my lip, maybe make it nice and smooth or give it a beveled edge. And that's about it. So the last thing I'm going to do is grab a wire tool. And what I like to do with the wire tool is just wrap it around my, my index fingers, put it on the opposite side of my pot, and then just pull all the way through. Pull it halfway through. Shimmy it up and through the pot. And this way we can actually see how we did. So this the point of us cutting it in half is to be able to know how we did and what we need to do better next time. So the base has a nice thickness. I wouldn't change much about that. Um, the walls are pretty good thickness. It gets a little bit thinner at the top, which is which a, okay. It'll still last long as a pot, but uh, you know, even consistency and maybe even a thicker wall would allow it to be a little bit more sturdy and stuff too. So as long as you're meeting those like height requirements and stuff, those little refinements are things you can work on when you go on to to um, improve on the next time you work on it. So that's all I wanted to do is show you guys how to uh, keep working on a cylinder. Just keep trying and good luck.